Hi everybody, welcome to an evening with Sips. Tonight we're gonna take a look at a game called Nomoria with this nice pixely writing here. It's fantastic. So this game is like Towns, this game is like Dwarf Fortress, probably heavily influenced by Dwarf Fortress as was Towns. Although we're not gonna try to, um, or we're gonna try not to, I should say, draw too many similarities between them because they're, they're all different games. Uh, just because they, they take some inspiration from a game doesn't mean they're trying to be exactly like that game. As we saw with Towns, Towns did things uh, completely differently to, to Dwarf Fortress in a lot of ways. And that goes for Nemoria as well. So um, so let's, let's hop in and take a look. I'm going to start a new game. Uh, wow. My, my kingdom name has, has been randomly generated for me and it's called The Sweaty Home. Which is, which is perfect. I, mean, I don't need to change that. I'm quite happy with my kingdom being called the Sweaty Home. Uh, wow. So, uh, so we're going we're gonna to start with a standard kingdom size. Uh, here's the seed. Uh, I, I think you can actually just put this seed in uh, and, and generate a map yourself with the seed. So if you want to use my seed, uh, as it were, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, game mode normal. I think you can change this to be peaceful or normal. We, we don't want it to be peaceful though. We, we want to get some bad guys if possible or whatever. So let's uh, let's generate the map and see what happens. Okay, world generated. Here we are. We're, we're just dumped in the middle of the wilderness. Um, li like many other games <laughs> of this nature. We're dumped in the middle of the wilderness with what looks to be a yak. A barrel which has strawberry wine in it. Oh, well, that's fantastic! At least everybody's got some strawberry wine to drink. We got this. We got a sack here. We oh, it's a cotton bag actually. It's not a sack. Um, cotton bag that's got strawberry seeds in it and wheat seeds. There's a crate here as well, which I can't quite see. Don't worry about that though. If you can't see anything, if you use comma and period on your keyboard, you you can switch the view around. You can you can rotate it around. Uh, and that's that's fine. So now we can actually see the crate. Click on it, and it looks like uh, it's a it's a pine crate that has other other pine crates in it. Three three pine crates. Uh, no, I don't. Is there? Oh no, sorry, I, I'm lying. It, it's not pine crates filled with pine crates. This one's got a whole bunch of bread in it. Oh yes. What about these other ones? I'm not sure. Uh, Thirty two breads in that one. We've got. Oh, 32 more breads in this one. And what's, there's only three of something in here. What could it be? Oh, look at that. Copper sword, copper breastplate, and a copper helmet. Oh, well, we've got everything we need now. We, we've got everything we need for these gnomes to, to start setting up a nice little town for us or, or some sort of little settlement, and, and they can start being productive. So let's just take a quick look around. You can use W, A, S, and D to move around the map. Um, another cool trick, if you hold control down and scroll with the mouse wheel, you can actually do this cool zoom here. And look, it, it takes away some of the pixelation from the graphics, which is quite nice, but you can't really see what's going on because it's too small. Well, at least for me. Maybe it's because I'm old and my, my eyesight's going or whatever. But uh, I, I usually like to play it like this. And look at these graphics. They're, they're pretty good, right? They're, they're not bad. It's like playing a Super Nintendo game. This is this takes me back to my childhood. Uh, I, I'm fine with this. this. This is fantastic. So we can take a look at who we got. We got the population tab up here. We can see that we've got nine gnomes. Nine gnomes, obviously better than one. Uh, if you only had one gnome who's out here in the middle of the wilderness with a, a barrel, a, a couple of crates, and a few sacks, probably nothing would happen. But because we got nine, we're going to make shit happen. This is going to be fantastic. Um, you can assign them jobs, which is cool. It's something that I always wanted to be able to do in towns, but but couldn't do. Uh, in this, it, it, it's it's there. We're, we're ready. We've got we got jobs. Look, we got miners, we got masons, stone carvers, woodcutters, and these these guys are going to do their job. So if you you set them to do something, uh, say for instance, we want to fell some trees, you can guarantee that these two guys are going to be doing it, whoever they are. So we can take a look. We can take a look at the status of people. Um, no gnomes have really strange names. I mean, look at this, the Daisy. What what kind of name is that? That's not even that's not even a name. Well, I, I guess it is kind of a name, but what well, we got Belvas, we got Woes, uh, Nuttergus, <laughs> Beludles, uh, Jassy, Zolt, Dinglebert, and uh, 
and Cramble Delarge. I'm never going to remember these names, by the way. I'm, I'm probably just going to invent names for these people on the spot because maybe the Daisy I will remember, but I, I won't know. If, I don't know if I'll, I'll be able to spot them either because I mean, look at these guys. Look at this guy. Jesus, is that that beard is actually attached to his hair fully, but he doesn't have any. There's no hair on the chin. That's amazing. Um, okay, so. Um, same, same way that I can look at them here, I can see that they're all idle. They're all idle, by the way, because I haven't unpaused the game yet. i got to press play there to, uh, to actually start, start playing and have these guys do stuff. Uh, without orders, they're just going to probably idle around anyway, but once I set them to do stuff, uh, they'll be away. So I can assign them to different stuff. For instance, if I get to a point where I, I think I need more than two builders and, and I don't want a rancher anymore, I can say, Zolt, you're no longer a rancher, I want you to be something else but let's leave him as a rancher for now um professions here is where you can actually create your own professions so uh if, if you weren't happy with the term woodcutter for whatever reason you could make a new profession and call it wood owner or, or something and, and 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 then use that instead uh, and maybe maybe these people will work better if if they have a better title uh, kind of like it you know if you work at mcdonald's uh, if you don't want to be known as the, the, the Hamburger Flipper, potentially you could um, re rename your title to, you know, Hamburger Technician or, or the, the Hamburger Doctor or something like that. And, and that might spur you on to do more work. Who knows? I, I don't know. Um, you can also see who's, who's died, <laughs> which is quite handy because when, when people die and, and you don't really know about it, uh, you can't remember their names, and then you can't make a legendary story for them after they're gone uh, because you can't remember their name. So so all good stuff. All that stuff is just population. Anyway, I, I'm talking way too much and not doing anything. I'm going to press play, and I'm going to let these people start doing stuff. So there go the yaks. The yaks are loose. Everybody's loose and looking around. Um, I can right-click anywhere on the map and get my little menu up so that I can do stuff. So if I go into agriculture, let's cut down some trees to start with. That, that's always a good idea. I'll go into agriculture, I'll go into fell trees, I get a little block, a little green block, and I can just click and drag it over all the trees I want to chop down. I want to chop down all these trees for now. And then I'll get my two woodcutters on the job. See, here we go. Look at these guys. We've got Papa Shango here with his top hat and monocle and... Uh, Ellen DeGeneres is here also cutting down the trees. And this little guy here, these gnomes are great. Look at them go. Um, we could also do with getting maybe a bit more food. Up in the corner here, we've got uh, 64 food and 128 drink, which is fine. But uh, if we want to go foraging, we can. And look, these apples have, or sorry, these apples. <laughs> these apples have trees on them. No, these trees have apples or peaches or, or whatever it is that, that's on them. Uh, which means that we can forage and, and pick it all up. So that's fine. We'll get we'll get whoever is assigned to do this stuff on the job. Look at that. Look at these apples. Oh, they look delicious. There's so many of them too. It's great. Um, we got to find a place where we want to actually build, start building our town. Now we can dig into the ground and build a whole city underground or 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 in the ground or we can just have it out in the open like in this nice little valley here and this valley looks perfect actually let's uh, let's clear it all out and then we can start building some stuff down here we can get some stockpiles and stuff it'll be great let's uh let's get everybody out here foraging all this stuff getting it out of the way all this this is cotton here so that we can make like uh, bolts and stuff like that bolts of wool these are strawberry plants, so we'll get some nice strawberries, which means that we can make some more strawberry wine. God, everybody loves strawberry wine. I mean, especially this, this guy with purple hair here who's running around with a pickaxe, looking menacing. And, and that must be his twin brother with slightly darker gray hair. Doesn't have a pickaxe, but is quite happy to forage like a maniac. Look at this. He's picking strawberries and some cotton and, and everything that he can find. That, that's great. Um, maybe we should make some farms too, but before we do that, let's designate an area here. I'll go into designate area, designate a stockpile, and uh, and let's start getting some of this wool and the strawberries and stuff uh, out of where we want to actually build, and we'll just put it up on the hill here for now. So we'll, we'll make this, we'll make it three by three, um, and if we go into, I think it's goods, uh, scroll down a little bit, and go to food, there we go. See, we can say we want fruit, 
so all the fruit that we've harvested, like the strawberries and the apples, that's fine. We'll, we'll stockpile it there. Uh, let's also get, uh, where is it? I think it's in cloth, is it? No, it's not. It's fiber. We want to get, is it cotton? I, I, I can't, I can't find it. I, oh, my, oh, it's plant. Yeah, there we go. It's seed clipping. No, it's not plant. It, it is, it's absolutely not plant. I want to get that cotton, and I really don't know where it is in here. Is it crafts? No, it can't be. Come on. It's got to be under wood, stone, soil, furniture, weapons, armor, goods. Is it even in goods? Oh, my God. I'm spending a lot of time trying to find this here. Well, we can, we can stockpile body parts as well. Look at this. Oh, God. Yeah, it's fantastic. Just a whole pile of limbs. Amazing. All right. Let's, let's forget about that for now. We'll close that, and at least these people now... See, all the people that were idle that had nothing to do, by default, they're all over it. Look at this. They, they come down here. They grab the strawberries and stuff like that. Um, you'll notice that this stockpile filled up really quickly. Look, one strawberry per square. Look at all the strawberries we have out in the field. That's, that's a travesty. We're going to have to make a huge stockpile. Or we can actually just put crates in here, and a crate will occupy one spot, but it'll fill up 32 strawberries per crate which is pretty good, right? So if I go into, I think it's build, and then I go to storage and crate, we have a couple of extra crates up there. So I can just say, let's build a crate. We'll plop it down here. Uh, confirm, you can you can drag that out as well, which is quite happy. Uh, and somebody should come, there we go. My God, that happened very quickly. Um, this, this crazy guy, Lando Calrissian, just brought a crate down uh, and they're going to be able to put strawberries and stuff into the crates now, which is which is really good. Uh, once as soon as they discover that uh, they should actually put the strawberries in stockpile crates, and they're not putting strawberries need to go into a barrel or a crate. I'm pretty sure it was a crate. That's fine though. Um, we should probably say that we want. Oh no, we said fruit, so that's fine. That's great. Okay, cool. So let's uh, let's dig out the foundation for our, our first house then, and. The way that we do that is we go to terrain here and we can either remove the floor or we can replace the floor. And replacing the floor is a bit better actually because if you remove the floor, say we remove the floor in this big area here, once they start removing the floor, they can't actually step into the area where it's been removed unless you start putting more floor back on. Replace floor just um, eliminates that step in between where they've actually just removed the entire floor and left it there. So they're just gonna dig up the dirt and then directly put down the floor straight away. So that's fine. We've got a whole bunch of logs up here which we can use for building material. Um, logs we can turn into wooden planks once we get a, uh, a workshop for it, but we're actually going to build our workshop inside here uh, straight away. So if I go to build, oh no sorry, if I go to terrain, I go to replace floor, I say let's make a log floor and we can choose any log or if we want it to all look the same we can take pine logs because we've got 76 pine logs uh, felled up there which is great so if I go build uh, let's just drag out an area big enough area here um, and this should be fine actually this this should be more than enough we can make this our little wood shop and now our, our builders are gonna go collect the logs and they're gonna come down here and you can see where it's green see that's somebody it means that it's been earmarked for somebody to start working straight away look at that look at that that guy looks exactly like Woody Harrelson he's got Lando Calrissian down here helping him god I mean who would have thought what a combo Woody Harrelson and Lando Calrissian working together on making a log floor for a wood shop that's fantastic stuff so look you can see these little clumps of dirt that they're see, they're replacing the floor so they're, they're taking the dirt out and they're putting logs in instead for the floor and then they're leaving these clumps of dirt all over the place because they're a bunch of messy bastards so let's uh, let's also stockpile dirt dirt stockpiling works a little bit differently to like to the fruits where the fruits will be keep be put into the crates and they can't be stacked on top of each other. Uh, stone and dirt and all that kind of stuff naturally stacks on top of each other, which is great. So let's designate an, another little area here for a stockpile. Oh, I say little, three by three. That's going to be more than enough for soil as well. So if I go into goods and I say, let's just collect all the soil there, close that. Uh, we should now get people moving the soil away from our log floor, which is great. And see, they're, they're piling it up in, into the clumps here. So like if I click on this, we can see um, 
there's a dirt pile of 18 dirts out of 64 dirts. I mean, that actually, that's only three by three, but that's actually a huge stockpile if all we're going to be putting there is dirt. So that's, that's great. And we're going to be producing a lot of dirt. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I love dirt as much as the next guy, but, um, but, but there's just going to be a shit ton of dirt before we know it here.